What was needed was a way of combining them. Perhaps the energy came from lightning. Whatever it was. Excuse me? Whatever it was, energy managed to arrange these chemical ingredients in just the right way. Whatever it was? I was hoping for something a little more scientific. Oh, so that's where that came from. Life didn't come from lightning striking a mud puddle. That's just silly. That documentary seemed a tad dated. It seemed to me like someone was trying to impose the Miller-Urey experiment on nature without really knowing the science behind it. What with the presence of energy and minerals, underwater vents seem more likely candidates for the formation of life. Besides Stein, it's a documentary. They're not always right, nor do they always do justice to what they're presenting. The most popular idea has been that life emerged spontaneously from primordial soup. In 1953, Stanley Miller mixed water, methane, ammonia, and hydrogen to simulate the early Earth's atmosphere. Then he ran electricity through it in an attempt to jumpstart life. It didn't work. While the initial results seem promising, 50 years later, most serious scientists have abandoned this approach in favor of alternate theories. Abandoned it? No. Although he didn't generate life, Miller did generate many organic molecules useful to life. Most alternative theories of abiogenesis start at this point. Prominent Darwinist Michael Roos attempted to explain one of them to me. He wasn't kidding. How did we get from an inorganic world to the world of the cell. Well, one popular theory is that it might have started off on the backs of crystals. My crystal ball. Molecules piggybacked on the back of crystals forming and that this led to more and more complex. But of course, the nice thing about crystals is every now and then you get mistakes, mutations, and that this opens the way for natural selection. But, but at one point there was not a living thing, yeah. then there was a living thing. How did that happen? Well, this is the, I've just told you. And I don't see any reason why you shouldn't go from very simple to more and more complex to more and more I complex. I don't either, I don't either, but I don't know how you get from mud to a living cell. That's my question. Yes, well, I've told you. I think it's on the back of crystals. Try one more time. On the backs of crystals. On the backs of crystals is at least one hypothesis, yes. So, so that's your theory, and you think that is more likely and less far-fetched than intelligent design? I think it is. This guy's talking clay theory. Basically, organic molecules collect on a crystalline catalyst, which reduces the energy barrier of the reactions, allowing for more complex molecules to form. It has since been discredited. Although daughter cells do contain the imperfections of the parent, they contribute far too many unique imperfections to be a viable storage medium of genetic information. What's more, it wasn't exactly the most popular of hypotheses. It was often used to illustrate a plausible origin because it's easy to understand. A more likely one is self-organization. The notion that life formed via self-replicating molecules contained in a fatty acid bubble. This involves more chemistry and thermodynamics, so it's harder to understand at a lower level. I wouldn't put Ben Stein's money on Dr. Roos's joyriding crystals, but it did make me wonder, what were the chances of life arising on its own? It's been speculated that probably there would have to be a minimum of about 250 proteins to provide a minimal life function. Here's the thing. Hypothetically, if life really required 250 proteins to be truly alive, all that means is the ancestor with 249 proteins wasn't truly alive. To wit, viri are not truly alive as they lack a metabolism. All this argument shows is that the first organisms would be more like a virus than a modern cell. Welcome to the Casino of Life. Who wants to spin for a chance to win? Oh, sure. I'll give it a shot. What do I win? Take a look at this. Uh -huh. How about the world's first single-cell organism? This perfectly aligned string of proteins could be yours. Now, take a spin. <laughs> I won! 
<laughs> Tina, tell him how many times he needs to do that to win the prize. 250. That's right, folks. And all in the correct order. But that's impossible. <laughs> We've heard that before, haven't we, Richard? Come on, Mother Nature. Do your thing. You stupid machine! Oh, I hate you! Actually, it wouldn't be unreasonable to say the first organism would be a fatty acid bilayer containing the self-replicating, self-ligating RNA. In this case, it would need no proteins and thus would require a roll of zero proteins and you'd have to get it zero times. Moreover, such an organism would organize itself via thermodynamics, so the odds are in its favor. We're talking about something that's staggeringly improbable. Roughly one in a trillion, 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 trillion. Let all of life choose a million, a trillion, a trillion, trillion. The number is essentially zero. Something has to skew nature to choose the ones that... Nature needn't be skewed. Mutation is what requires this offset. Nature provides it. That's natural selection. So, in the game of life, it looks as if the house always wins. Luckily, some serious scientific minds have figured out a way to beat the odds. Directed Panspermia! When faced with the overwhelming problem of the origin of life, Nobel Prize winner Francis Crick proposed this theory, that life was seeded on Earth. Which basically means aliens did it. Funny story. Intelligent design predicts a creator. That creator will either be a mortal being gifted with considerable technology, or a deity. That mortal being would, by definition, be alien to our planet, thus ID predicts aliens or God. As Ben Stein ridicules the notion of panspermia, I find myself recalling a statement earlier that says intelligent design doesn't involve a god. This is not a religious argument. And so why would you bring religion into it? You don't need religion. This is a red herring. If ID doesn't require divine creation and finds the notion of panspermia ridiculous, this begs the question as to who exactly ID proposes as the designer of the universe. Perhaps a wizard did it. We don't know what caused life to arise. Was, did it arise by a purely undirected process? Or did it arise by some kind of intelligent guidance or design? And the rules of science are, are being applied to actually foreclose one of, the possible, one of the two possible answers to that very fundamental and basic and important question. So the rules of science say we will consider any possibility except one that is guided. Exactly. Now, the rules of science say we will consider any testable hypothesis until it tests true or untrue. If it tests true, it will likely face scrutiny for some time. In other words, Stein, find a testable prediction of intelligent design, gather some evidence, then publish. No matter how life began, on the backs of crystals or in the test tube of some intelligent designer, everyone agrees it started with a single cell. No. Huh? Uh, no. I can't think of a single scientist that thinks things started with something so complex. That's like saying we learned to fly by building 747s.